Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today's card is for Tuesdays with Tupelo where I show you some products from Tupelo Designs LLC and it's also part of the Hop to Stop sponsored by, or sorry, run by Becca Dawn at a the distressed damsel dot blogspot dot com and I will leave you a link to the blog hop in the video description below but Tupelo Designs LLC carries a wide variety of Newton's Nook Designs products who are sponsoring the hop and I'm going to show two of those stamp sets today Beautiful Blossoms which is the flower set and Simply Sentimental which was that sentiment stamp set I also wanted to show you a variety of the purple inks that you can pick up at Tupelo Designs LLC I got the new Wilted Violet in my design team package and I thought it would be interesting for you to see how the Wilted Violet compares to some of the other distressings already available in the line, uh, purple inks, including Shaded Lilac, Dusty Concord, Seedless Preserves, and Milled Lavender. Seedless Preserves and Milled Lavender are both very red purples. They, um, you know, purple is red and blue combined, and so when you see a purple color, sometimes you'll see much more red in it, much more blue in it. So Shaded Lilac and Dusty Concord have blue undertones, seedless preserves, and milled lavender have red undertones. The wilted violet is, in my opinion, and based off of what I've heard from other people, the most true purple, the most even combination of the two colors. And so that's why it's really unique to the palette and a great addition to the Distress line. So that's just to show you that just because you have one color of purple Distress does not mean you have them all. And so if you're interested in, after seeing the swatches, adding one to your collection, the nice thing is that Tupelo Designs carries um, the full palette. So to get my card started, I am going to clear and boss the Happy Birthday Sentiment from Newton's Nook Designs Simply Sentimental. I chose to use a Happy Birthday Sentiment because... Becca mentioned that we could donate the cards that we create for the hop and that they needed birthday cards most of all, so I knew that I wanted to create a birthday card for the hop. I'm going to create two cards today. There will actually be four cards in total because I started this video process on Periscope, experimenting and asking for advice, and I'm actually going to share with you some of the tips that I picked up from people over on Periscope in my video today. So um, I'll try to give credit where credit is due. And I'm starting this first card with Seedless Preserves and Milled Lavender. I start with the Milled Lavender, and I'm going to try to cover most of the card base with the Milled Lavender. I'm not going to stamp over the Happy Birthday at all. I'm going to kind of leave a little bit of a white halo around that just to bring attention to the sentiment. And you could stamp over it, however, because it is clear embossed and it would resist. Or you could cover the entire sheet with the flowers and then choose to stamp the sentiment over it if that's what you prefer. I thought that it would look nice to have the two warm purples together so that you could kind of see how they pair together and they're going to complement each other. I am using the rounded flowers for the lighter color and then the more pointy flowers for the darker color and this kind of helps build the contrast between the two of them and it lets you see a variety of the flowers available in the stamp set. It's one of my most used stamp sets along with Simply Sentimental. I've done a lot of cards with these and they're very versatile so I would recommend both of those stamp sets. The next card I'm going to use Shaded Lilac and Dusty Concord as the bluish purples. I'm going to have a similar process where I start with a lighter color, in this case Shaded Lilac, although it's not quite as light as the Milled Lavender and I will fill most of the page with it, but I'm going to sort of do the opposite, and this time I'm going to use the pointy flowers for the lighter color and the more rounded flowers for the darker color. I'm going to layer them right over each other because the darker flowers will show up against the lighter ones, and um, I think it just adds more interest and variation rather than to keep everything separate. I wouldn't be able to stamp as many flowers, and I've done stuff like that in the past with the stamp set, where I've sort of just created like a trail of flowers, and this time I wanted to create a more full background effect. Now, once I have two panels stamped, one with the reds or warm purples and one with the blue or cool purples, I'm going to add a little bit of wilted violet to both of them. 
I had originally thought that I might try to combine some cools and warms, but when I was experimenting over on Periscope, the suggestion was that instead of using the wilted violet as the flowers, to come in with the wilted violet to distress the edges or to add some color to the edges. So now that I have both these panels full, I'm ready to clean my area and get started with the wilted violet. And it's the, again, the true purple where it's more of an even mix of both. I'm going to ink the edges, but that means I have to hold down the center of the card. I don't want to get any fingerprints or smudges on the center of the panel because now that I've invested in it, I don't want to ruin the card by getting those fingerprints in there. And so a suggestion that came on the Periscope video, and I believe it was Colleen who suggested this, was to put a sticky note in the center. And so that way, as you are touching the center, your inky fingers aren't actually going to touch it, and the sticky note will protect it. And I thought that was a fabulous idea. I'd never thought of that before. And so that's what I'm doing here. The full-size post-it note was covering a little bit too much of the inside for me, and I wanted to kind of blend a little bit closer. But it worked out really well, and I'm keeping a really light hand with the Distress Ink blending, and only touching the very edge of the blender tool to the paper, because I really want that soft look. I always recommend starting with a light pressure and then building up color if you like what you're seeing and also to come from off the paper and then on to create that soft edge. Once I had that wilted violet down on the edges, I still wanted to incorporate it a little bit more into the card and so I decided to take this little swirl from the same Beautiful Blossom stamp set and just stamp a couple of swirls in the wilted violet color so that way the color is not only at the edges but it's tied in throughout the card. And when you're using the swirl stamp, just like with the flowers, you do want to kind of turn it, rotate it, make it look a little bit more randomized. That's always more pleasing to the eye when creating your own background to randomize the images to make sure some of them are stamped off of the card a little bit so that it really looks like you trimmed this from a piece of pattern paper as opposed to creating a perfect piece. So I could have left it there. Those are beautiful cards. The flowers um, have a lot of detail in them with the quilled flower look, but I thought that it'd be fun to add some sparkle. These cards are a little bit more feminine with the flowers, and uh, sometimes the color purple is considered more of a feminine color. But I still wanted to add a touch of sparkle. I, I realize that um, when I donate the cards to the organization, they probably won't give them to a man for his birthday, which is fine. Um, but I wanted to just kind of add a little bit more sparkle and shine. I'm not sure if I'm making sense there. But anyway, I thought there's a couple different ways that I could add a touch of detail. It might um, make the card a little bit more uh, cutesy or feminine, but that's okay. And so what I decided to do is add sequins, gems, and pearls. So you could use whatever you have on hand, whatever of those three things, or enamel dots, if that's kind of where the, the trend you picked up on, because I know gems were really trendy, and then pearls were really trendy, and then enamel dots were trendy, and then sequins were trendy, and so like I have a little bit of everything, but in purple, um, I decided to just go in and add a touch of each. For the sequins, I just made them a smattering all throughout the card, yet for the gems and the pearls, I instead decided to make them mostly the centers of the flowers. And one of the reasons that I decided to do this is because every once in a while, with stamping with the Distress Inks, you don't get a perfect impression. They're not ideal for just colored stamping. They're more meant for the techniques and the blending and that sort of thing. So every once in a while, you get a little bit of a mess up. One area is a little lighter or it doesn't, you know, stamp quite right. And these sequins and gems are allowing me to sort of hide those little bits of mistakes. These pearls are actually all attached in a row, and so I have to cut them apart first before I add them, but sometimes you can get a cheaper package for if they're attached and things like that, and so that's why I was okay. I think I paid like 10 cents, 25 cents for a lot of these packages of gems. But you can, of course, get a lot of that at Tupelo Designs LLC, where I picked up my Distress Ink. And that's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, including the use of Distress Ink and Newton's Nook Designs, or finding out more about Tupelo Designs LLC, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing cards weekly. And thanks for watching. Bye.